Hmm. That's super good. I appreciate that. I think um, a lot of people, I know you're not a theologian by training, but a lot of people uh, will read Genesis like one and two and the book of Genesis and think, well, okay, maybe it's even, maybe it's possible there'd be evolution by design, but the Bible clearly speaks about like God creating Adam and Eve and the animals and things like that, which seems to be like directly opposed to like an evolutionary story. Um, so how would you respond to that kind of way of saying, well, there can't, there can't be the middle way because like the, the Bible doesn't allow it. Yeah. Um, I think this will take a little while to unpack, but um, mm -hmm. for me, at least, the first thing to unpack is like uh, how how clear really is 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 the the first few are the first few chapters regarding mm -hmm. say the age of the earth and the length of the days. So, mm -hmm. so one of the key things that I eventually discovered and thinking through it uh, was that um, so we have six days in Genesis, and then we have a seventh day uh, which doesn't have an end. Um, mm -hmm. so the seventh day doesn't, doesn't finish in the same ways that the, the first six days do. Uh, so there's a couple of places in the new Testament that, that I think, and a, a lot of people think I actually teach that the seventh day continued, um, through, throughout, um, biblical times that, that when Jesus uh, was teaching about the Sabbath, I think it's in, I, I should have looked these things up, but I think it's in John mm -hmm. chapter six, I, we talking mm -hmm. about the Sabbath. Um, he says that, uh, my father is working until this day. And his argument is that, okay, if, if God can work on the Sabbath, then, then I can as well. And the, the idea behind that is that this, that we're in the seventh day, that we're in God's Sabbath rest. Now that God is, is, is God's rest is to, to rule and reign over creation. Uh, and that we're in that seventh day and uh, God is still able to, to, to do work during that time. And Jesus's argument is basically that because he is the son of God, he can also, uh, do work during during the Sabbath. So so he has the authority to do that. That's, that's roughly the argument that's being made. There's, there's also in, in uh, the book of Hebrews, it talks about us being able to enter God's rest. And it, it talks about, um, it refers uh, back to uh, this, I would say this ongoing seventh day. So if people are interested in that, uh, they, they can look up this idea that the seventh day continues. I think that's taught very clearly in a couple of places in the New Testament. So if mm -hmm. that's true, then the seventh day is not a literal 24 hour day. Mm. Um, I, I think from that it actually follows that you don't have to think the first few days are also 24 hours because a, a lot of people who uh, hold very strongly to the, the 24 hours, they refer to um, some verses, uh, for instance, in Deuteronomy re regarding the Sabbath. And they say, you have to take this literally because there is a literal seven day a working week. But if it turns mm. out that um, the seventh day is not literal, then that also uh, leaves open the possibility the first six days are also not I just straightforward 24 hour days. Um, that's a long winded way of saying that that's just one argument for why the, the days are not just 24 hours. Another argument is that the sun is created on day four, but the definition of a day is in relation to the sun. So, so what are the first three days if there's no sun? That's one reason to think that these are not, you know, straightforwardly literal days in the, in the way that we understand them because there was no sun, but we meet, everyone measures uh, the length of a day according to the sun. So there's something different, at least in the first three days, something different in the, the seventh day. I, I think in general, that's an argument for thinking these are not just straightforwardly simple, uh, literal 24 hour days. Mm. Um, once that's open, um, then I think we can think of, we can look at, at the text uh, in a slightly different way. We can realize this is not just straightforward scientific narrative. Um, this, yeah, this is a different kind of text. Uh, also, the, the whole framework hypothesis is really important, that there's a pattern to the days. The first three days are paralleled by the, the second three days. So day one parallels day four, day two parallels day five, and day three parallels day six. So basically, in the first three days, God is creating regions or realms of, of things. And in the next three days, he's filling those with, with creatures. Um, mm -hmm. So there's this kind of structure to the text. Uh, then it's not... Uh, literal 24 hour days. As soon as we've got that, then this is a creation story and it's not just a straightforward scientific narrative. Um, yeah, these kinds of um, considerations about the text, I think open up the possibility uh, for some kind of developmental process, which is not just uh, purely interventions by God. Mm -hmm. The only thing I'd add is like, um, there's a really good book that came out recently by Stan ha Ben Stanhope, who um, responds to the Creation Museum and like Ken Ham and others called like How the Creation Museum Misunderstands um, Genesis and like the ancient Near Eastern context of the Bible. And like he talks about like 
Stanhope would say like the, the day, he um this is another possible option here like he thinks the days are literal it's just like what we're understanding with regards to like what Genesis 1 and 2 is talking about is just completely different than like what a lot of people assume and it kind of starts with like God creating like his temple on earth um and like Genesis 1 1 and 1 being dependent on 1 2 and there's just like there's a lot of options here like it's just like I I, I just wanted to add that because it's like um it's not true that you just like read Genesis 1 in two and the only option is six 24 hour days and that's young earth creationism like that's just not a true situation yeah and i, I think most people who, who read it that way just miss out on the main points of the text so i think this idea of god's mm -hmm. uh temple is super important and I, I think that is one of the a really important teaching that god made the universe as his temple um and then he put his image in in, in the temple i uh, just just as mm -hmm. as was standard but unlike the kind of standard uh, images in, in the temples of the ancient Near East, uh, he puts human beings as, as his image. Uh, so there's all kinds of important theological things that come out of um, understanding this idea of creation as God is uh, creating a, a temple for himself and he's putting his representatives there. Um, and yeah, if, if people focus uh, too much on the length of the days and that kind of thing, they miss out on um, the main things that we should be learning from, from the text.